Heavenly Father and Mother, we thank you for all that we have, all that we are, for this opportunity to gather together with our brothers and sisters around the world. We're so thankful for the means to do this, the modern technology that allows us to connect in ways that we weren't able to in years past. So we're very, very thankful for for that, we're thankful for each other and all that we have to offer to edify one another. Please surround us with your love and light that we can always be uplifted and know the right choices to make. We love you. We appreciate all that you do for us. In Yeshua's name, so be it. So be it. So be it. Thank you. So I think we'll start with uh, with Lazarus today. Um, Brother Tom wrote a question to me um, about the guardians. And I want to encourage everybody, if you have questions about anything related to Celestine Light that you think would be interesting for your own knowledge, but also for everyone else's knowledge, feel free to Send me those questions and I'll be happy to answer them in this format so that everybody can hear the answer to the question. But in this case, uh, for Tom's question, I wasn't really sure of the answer. So I had to ask Lazarus uh, and then he gave a, I was expecting like a little short answer <laughs> from him about what the answer to Tom's question was. He gave a pretty long answer actually. Um, so I'm gonna read that to you. Um, and just to be clear, because we're going to be also be uh, having Felis come in. When Felis is here, that I'm, I'm channeling Felis. So I'm actually allowing my body, my voice uh, to be used by Felis to, to do what he talk, what he wants to say. I don't channel Brad Lazarus. Lazarus is a real person in this, in this physical life where Felis is a higher, higher being in the celestial kingdom, not on this earth. So very two different circumstances. I just have a telepathic connection with Lazarus. I can talk to him just like we're talking right now. And uh, so when he talks, I can just write down what he says, which is what I did. So I'm gonna just read Lazarus' answer to Tom's question, but I'm gonna put it up on the screen so everybody can see it and as I read it. So let's do this. Okay, so, so everybody, can everybody see this? Um, yes. I wanna make it smaller. Make it, okay, because... okay, I'll make it smaller. Is that better? Okay. Conversation with Lazarus of Bethany about guardians of the future. So this is Lazarus speaking now. I'm just writing what he said. Hello to the Celestines out there that might receive this communication. As you can imagine, I am quite busy with my stewardship, nor is communicating with you as wonderful as you might be with such great potential within my responsibilities either. Hence, please do not expect this type of communication again unless I am so directed by Elohim. Lazarus is an extremely busy guy. <laughs> And I oftentimes have a hard time getting hold of them, too. Rob Rosen has begun to share the story of my life. And that is quite like that's in the two books, Inception and Destiny. He came to me the other day requesting my insight to a question that was asked by one of you regarding guardians of the future. I know some of you wonder if you could be one. Certainly that is something ES and S uh, have wondered as well about themselves. The only answer I can give is I do not know. Neither the Elohim or my sister Miriam, the angel of the covenant, have given me any hint of who might be chosen to become guardians of the earth as I complete my own 2000 year old journey with this sacred calling and prepare to reunite on a forever basis with my beloved wife, Hannah. Though I know not if any of you may be numbered in the days to come as a guardian, I can tell you some of the traits and qualities you should engender within yourself to be worthy to be called and ordained to this great responsibility. First, you must know that all guardians must be married to a soulmate or a very high twin flame before they would even be considered to be officially endowed with the stewardship and tools of a guardian. Normally, this would be a couple, a male and a female, but it is possible to have a different relationship arrangement as long as both the male and female energy are represented. Until you have vast experience and have achieved a male-female balance within yourself, it is essential for your success and even survival to be able to have the insights, emotions, knowledge, in ways of thinking and acting of both sexes, working together for the common goal and to overcome the mighty challenges you will face. Alone, you would fail, but together with the combined male and female aspects, you can succeed. 
This is why guardians are always called as a male-female couple or a triple if they are in a power of three relationship. Second, as a guardian, you will need to develop a vast skill set to be able to confront and conquer the challenges you will face. Many of the skills will be ones you learn after you have become a guardian. But there are certain things you can do now to develop essential traits and skills that will certainly increase the likelihood that Elohim would look favorably upon you and your potential as a guardian. The first trait you must enhance in your life is your ability to feel and express love, especially for yourself and for your mate and companion of eternity. Though there will be many times in your guardian duties when you will need to physically battle to the death with heinous creatures, the weapon you will wield to the greatest effect in most challenges is sincere, heartfelt love with those people and beings that can feel it. Admittedly, there are some beings, such as the Galzalons and the Farby, that have no jaw center, and hence they cannot feel love or any emotion. With these and others like them, love can still be a beneficial tool in how you decide to treat them, only as long as you remember that they do not feel any emotions. First, you must love yourself. Though you should strive to do your best each day in all of your endeavors, you cannot be a perfectionist, as you will end up chasing a butterfly that you can never catch. Such pursuit will only leave you frustrated, angry, and feeling less of yourself. Be happy with doing the best you can each day, and let that be enough. If you want to bake 100 breads one day, but only had time to bake 80, be just as satisfied and happy with yourself as if you had reached the 100, as long as you did the best you could in the time that you had. As you succeed in being less critical of yourself, you will become less critical and judgmental of others, and well on the path of learning and living the power of love. As guardians are so tightly bound to their companion and so dependent upon them for the success of their joint stewardship, the greatest love must be between them. While you are still in this mortal life, it is essential that you develop the trait of speaking and showing your love for your beloved several times during each and every day. Depending upon how you were raised and your own experiences, this will be a bigger challenge for some than others. But without the ability to show a celestine level of love to your beloved, you will not be able to become a guardian. And what is the celestine level of love? It is simple, but it only works when it is equally pursued by everyone. Seek each day to find ways to express your love by word and deed. Find things big and even very tiny to compliment, praise, and appreciate. When conflicts or disagreements arise, seek ways to harmonize, compromise, empathize, and find a mutually beneficial and loving path forward. Let's not neglect the physical aspect of love. It is very, very important. When you speak to each other about anything, look deeply into one another's eyes in a way you never look at any other person. Your eyes are the windows of your soul. Let them be overflowing in their expression of love for your mate. Even if you're talking about something very unloving, such as how to rid the earth of a heartless invader, or how to pay the bills that are due that month for the charade life you will be living as an immortal guardian among those who live and die in just a single century. I cannot stress enough the importance of physically expressing your love several times a day. I am not speaking of sex, although that is one of the many ways you can express physical love. I am referring more to simple, small physical gestures that you initiate, such as reaching over and putting your hand on the leg of your beloved sitting beside you, or coming up and rubbing their neck or shoulders, not necessarily because they seem to need it, but just because you want to express your love. Each should come to the other to initiate physical loving contact several times during a day, even if it is in the hectic day of challenges in your guardian stewardship. Many times I would be fighting some nemesis, either physically or mentally, and would be empowered to, gra- empowered to greater effort simply from a light, loving touch of Hannah on my neck or hand, even in passing, accompanied by a quick lock of her eyes as I was moving in one direction and she was moving in another. The next thing you must do if you aspire to become a guardian is to be a sponge for knowledge and to not be one-dimensional in your, in your pursuit. Anytime you have an opportunity to gain more knowledge about anything, especially something you currently know nothing about, and perhaps even have no interest in, leap at the chance and soak all that knowledge in. Even if it is something you may never see at the time, see of, even if you, even if it is something you may at the time see of little value, you will be surprised at how valuable that knowledge may be to you someday in the future. Perhaps you have heard the saying, jack of all trades, but master of none. Elohim will choose such a person as a guardian. One that has a wide range of knowledge and skills in many areas, but is not a master of any of them over someone that is an expert in a certain field, but has little knowledge or abilities beyond their expertise. 
Part of your knowledge must be of current world events and local concerns as well. Perhaps you never watch the news because it is depressing and mostly of things that are going wrong in the world. However, dealing with the things that are going wrong is the stewardship of guardians. And reading or watching the news from local to worldwide is something you must do. But you must avoid the fake news of the mainstream media and the very wacky conspiracy theories promulgated on social media. As a potential guardian, it's important to be able to separate the wheat from the chaff when it comes to news and social media reveals. Though Ambrosian has not yet written about it, most of the actions we do as guardians take place here on our earth. With the Alamars who are born on this planet, who sometimes take actions that endanger all people of the planet. For instance, it is very well understood today that had Nazi Germany succeeded, the world would be a very different, would be very different and not in a good way. As the last remaining guardian by the time World War II arrived, it became my duty to ensure the Nazis could not succeed. Someday, hopefully, one of Ambrosian's books will tell the details. But suffice it to say that my actions as a guardian ensured that it was impossible for the Nazis to succeed. I sabotaged their advanced weapons developments and thwarted their attempts to establish secure sources of oil. Without the weapons, including the atomic bomb, they were restrained in their ability to destroy. And by 1944, with no oil to fuel their war machine, their tanks could not move and their planes could not fly. As a potential guardian, it behooves you to also become self-reliant and able to defend yourself. You will be operating in the world, but no longer of it, and must be able to provide for yourself outside of the normal economic system. And regardless of whether the economy is up or down, as you, as, and as well as defend yourself and others when need arises, you should learn the skills to make it so, from professional economic skills such as trading, to physical skills such as martial arts or firearms, to mental skills and abilities to, to greater development of your psychic abilities, which you will certainly need as a guardian. Many of these should be classes that are taught to the celestial light priesthood so that all of you, even if you are never chosen as guardians, will have the tools to have greater success, security, and freedom in the life that you live. Lastly, I will tell you to get closer to Elohim and the Celestine light. Being a guardian is, after all, a calling of Elohim that is only given to those with pure, unbreakable bonds to the Celestine light of Elohim. With that, I must go. Duty calls, and until some of you can replace me, I must heed the call. May you be blessed in your pursuit of living beyond the mundane and discovering the greatness within you, Lazarus of Bethany. Wow. <clears throat> that was awesome. Wow. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. have, you all, have you all read um, the two books that? Yes. About yes. Lazarus. Okay. And I think that's where mm -hmm. Reggie started with Celestia Might, wasn't yes, it? Yes. That well, that was it. That was my that was my kickstart. Your opening. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think I heard uh, Erica said she was starting to read uh, Inception now, I think. I remember getting an email from her recently for that. Oh, I'm reading um, the Immortality. Oh, the Labyrinth of Immortality, yeah, right. By, so I'm, I'm just about done with that, then I'm going to read Inception. Yeah, you'll find Inception is pretty much uh, going to cover almost all the same uh, chapters that were in Labyrinth with a few things taken out and a few things added in. Um, so if you've already read Labyrinth, you may want to go right into Destiny and even skip uh, Inception. Uh, okay, the original I, I will way do I started that. that was with Labyrinth, and I realized after I did Labyrinth that there was too much in there for the general public as far as Celestine things from the oracles. So I took most of uh, Labyrinth, leaving out some things and, and created uh, Destiny, added some things in that Lazarus had added. And then, uh, excuse me, created Inception. And then Destiny is a completely separate uh, account uh, of Lazarus' first adventure as a, as a guardian and with Hannah. And, and you uh, asked Lazarus recently, I don't know if you announced it in the last meeting, that you want to start on the next episode of... Which I actually have already started on book three, finally, for that. Uh, and, uh, but it's interesting because Lazarus is, he's very, very hard to get a hold of. I mean, if I try 10 times to get a hold of him, he may respond twice. So it's really hard to write a book when I have to depend on him to tell me the story and he's hardly ever available to do that. So what he told me he's going to start doing, because he realizes the same problem. So he's going to start by basically telling a story when he has time, he's going to tell a story, he's going to record it on a a recording crystal for me so that then when I have a recording crystal it'd be like listening to a tape recorder I can just listen to the recording crystal and then I'll be able to 
here without him having to be there personally telling the story. So we're yeah. really curious what a recording pistol is. <laughs> no, no, I know a recording well, pistol. Well, I mean, to be able to, to actually use it. Use it. Yeah, well, we'll I mean, be, yeah, we've we get, seen the recording. Well, yeah, you know, when, when we get, because he's actually going to deliver it. So <laughs> when we get the recording crystal, then I'll show it to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Haven't got one yet. <laughs> yeah. So, so, there are so many miraculous things happening with the books and the yeah. oracles, and it is just amazing. Everything that I wished for when I was younger than 13 years old. Everything that I wish for, uh, the world that I imagine I live, is is here. It, exactly what yeah. the, I imagine all my life that is beyond this this world. It's it's all now here. And that's right. amazing. The magical world all around us. And it's wonderful to have all of you a part of it. And and in the future, I'm sure for some of you, a, a much greater part of it. And. Uh, Look forward to that, and hopefully all of you. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. So, okay, so if, any comments or questions about Lazarus before we go to the next thing? Yes, Brother Eddie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so looking at, from what, from what I heard, it was amazing. So thank you for sharing that. It was very, very powerful, firing, especially when I heard martial arts. He is <laughs> perked up. I was like, yes, there's <laughs> a reason. <laughs> So, but what was kind of interesting was that he mentioned his, his you know, he's, he's mentioned his age very subtly. He's like 2,000 plus years old. Right. Yeah. Hey. He's been around a long time. and well, he's, ready to, uh, he's ready to retire. He is really ready yeah. to retire. Yeah. 2,000 <laughs> plus we, years old. We, I think we told you in another meeting how his time clock was stopped 2000 years ago but then it was turned on again in 1951 70 yeah. yeah so 70 years ago so he's been living in real time and aging um although ambrosian said he still looks like he's in his early 40s well i haven't i haven't seen him in person but yeah he's that he he describes himself if someone saw, him, saw, saw yeah i can see the image that he places of course that's like facebook you can place images that you know are ten years old. <laughs> no, no, he he assures me that any that anyone who meets him in person would never think he's over forty. Well, yeah. I was just <laughs> making a joke. But, but that's because that. and, you know, the neat thing is that the things that the things that allow him to look and act and feel as young as he does are all things that are available to us. It's nothing special that he has some secret magic thing that does that for him. They're just the proper diet, the proper herbs, the proper exercise. These are the and things some that, tools that, he's given us that, are, the, that help, and we can all take advantage of them if we choose. I really want to get one of those um, chambers. Oh yeah, that, yeah, hyper, hyper, hyperbolic chamber. One of the things that Lazarus uses, we don't have one ourselves, but we'd like to get one, is a hyperbolic uh, chamber. So if you want to look that up on the on the internet, hyperbolic chamber. That's one of the things that he said he uses to uh, keep his age from aging. <laughs> In fact, that's kind of what they showed in that little show, The Iron Fist. That one, that. Oh, right. that one guy would go and lay in a chamber. He was, right, that was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if any of y'all watched the show, The Iron Fist, I'm <laughs> super hero. Have you yeah. watched it, Reggie? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like the martial arts movie. It was, it was, it was kind of killing the martial arts. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but that in, yeah, in that, in that, in that show, there's one, that uh, one character that actually uses a hyperbolic yep. chamber. So yeah, that's 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 one type of hyperbolic chamber. You can have that's actually the most common type of type that you lay down in. But they also have something you can sit in as well. Um, and they have. It, it, the one that in that show is a really you know expensive rigid type but they have inflatable ones and stuff and and basically the hyperbolic chamber puts your body under increased air pressure and increased oxygen content while you're in the hyperbolic chamber well even um in the 90s you used to be able to rent oxygen tanks or go into a medical supply place you didn't need a prescription and it's amazing just breathing extra oxygen. We'd come home from work and be tired. And, you know, where some people go have a drink, we'd take 
some oxygen and yeah, we'd be like, whoa, yeah, we 10 minutes and work another whole like, day. If we it want. was amazing. Absolutely amazing. But they've created it. They don't want people to feel yeah, you like can't that. just go <laughs> do that anymore. Yeah. Well, my my acu I go I go to an acupuncturist every every week and my acupuncturist has like an oxygen um, tank that he gives me as one as a as one as a, uh, um, a treatment. The treatment, yeah, because he's, oh, wow. a, he's he, yeah, he's a he's a martial artist like myself. He was trained in Shaolin, so he was saying this is what's going to allow you to, to be better and more powerful in your technique. So I I do that treatment every week. So it's kind of interesting that you mentioned that because I do that every week. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know Actually. how powerful it is. And yeah. yeah. Speaking <laughs> speaking of your martial arts, <coughs> excuse me, training. Yes. One of the things that Lazarus mentioned was. Uh, teaching things in our celestial like priesthood uh, lessons i don't is it possible to teach anything regarding self-defense in a zoom setting versus an in-person uh -huh. setting yes yeah, possible I, i've taught i've taught one of my students to break a brick through zoom oh okay yeah yeah I, well, I that might be break... something that we, that we might consider here in the future if you have an interest in, in uh, time to do it is to tying it to, into yeah, your is there something that you can teach us uh, via zoom uh related to us helping us have better self-defense skills right right it's, it, yeah it's, I, I could do that it's, it's it's more it's more of understanding what we have what we have and how to use it right yeah. awesome. we have we have these are weapons everything about our bodies are weapons just knowing how to use it effectively and efficiently without putting too much energy, but using your breath and Stalonica, right? Stalonica training, you know, contemplating meditation, right? Using all that, you know, behind of what we already have and enhancing it, like like Lazarus said, you know, we have all the stuff, we have all the techniques in the Celestine, it's how we use it to get to the next level. So yeah, absolutely. And with time, you know, with time and scheduling, yeah, we should definitely do that. Just, just, just give the basic, aspects of how to tap into your chi your energy how to move how to flow how to throw a punch without breaking your hand how to kick without breaking your foot and all that stuff yeah absolutely yeah, sounds awesome that would be good stuff to know mm -hmm. okay. I have one. <laughs> that's good that was good <laughs> i like that you're in a good start already <laughs> Great. i have one uh one more magical question so um yeah while i was reading the books because i started with the oracles um because i wanted something real i have read 20 years plus on everything that is about um hermetism occult energy light dark everything and i i I just spoke to my garden angels, bring me something real, the most real thing there is on Amazon, and I find the oracles. Me being me, I wanted to see what is not there in the oracles, what is not told, because I can sense something more behind the lines. This, this I have done all my life. I want to learn more and more and more. And this is how I got to the books, Destiny and Inception. And I I know I noticed you have the labyrinth. So I imagine two words, extra two words. I will learn. So I bought every single book. But me being here, it's it's not the most biggest problem. But one day when when all this with the COVID is over. I will come to you guys. I mean, I, I want to come first time and then I will be coming if you have me. But I I miss here the the the, the practical part. Theory, I, I know everything that Lazarus said. I mean, I have all these traits, even my soulmate, but I miss the practice part. I love to do magic. I love to someone to throw me a stone in the air and like Miriam to fetch it. I want to to draw the, the gateways. I want to to show me someone how to use my my magic wand. I want these practical things and me being so away from you guys, I need a teacher. Can I call on someone an an angel of magic hearts to say? Um, or a teacher 
so I can talk with her or her preferably because I'm more connected with female energy or him if they want to show me to connect with them telepathically or on the astral level so they can show me how to use everything because I know to do all these rituals I enchant minerals now even I'm good with magic rituals with with organized light magic but I need a teacher is there someone to call in because I'm so far away from you and there are things in magic, in magic arts that I, as in martial arts, we need to be shown uh, physically, face to face. Well, we are, our, our plan is to have uh, like a one week training every year. <clears throat> and that was supposed to start last year with the summer solstice and then COVID hit and, you know, and then this year things are up in the air. So, you know, it's <clears throat> testing our patience. And uh, that's one of my things that I have the hardest time with because uh, I keep too close of track of time. And I know I have a finite amount of time, so I want to, I want to do it now. And so that's been one of my biggest lessons is, we will be given what we are ready to receive. But you're going to find that, that, that our priesthood, now we're back to doing our priesthood classes, especially with Philos, you're going, to, you're going to get a lot of that practical, even though it's not in person. Today, you'll get a, you'll get a great practical today, just starting with uh, what Philos is going to talk about today. Yeah, great. So, because so I as, can far, as far as an angel or guide, I'll have to look in to see um, if there's somebody mm -hmm. particularly that would work with you for that. And I'll get back to you with an answer on that. Yeah, but I think you're going to find a lot right here in the priesthood class. Yeah. Can I, can I, I say something? So. I hope so. Yeah. Can, can I say something real quick? Real okay. quick. Um, I understand your question, Sister Dante, because I'm in the same boat. I, I like somebody physically, you know, the teacher. And it goes back to when I was training in martial arts. You know, for 30, for 30 years, I was trained with my grandmaster and my master. 30 years. Show me the techniques, show me how to do it, show them how to do everything, you know, how to break, how to move, how to throw, you know, all that stuff, right? After those 30 years, they don't teach me as well. Because in that time, you know, you know, we, we started learning what we need to learn. So most of my teachings have been with, you know, asking uh, guardian angels, asking my spirits asking you know uh, the angels themselves to teach me and and they actually teach me i get information through my dreams i had an information the other day about levitation so i was i was i was i was i was i was basically practicing levitation and moving objects with my mind right cool. and everything so i was doing that in my dream and it felt very very real i was actually doing it i was even shocked that i did it and i was being guided my guardian angel to how to do that you know breathe visualize move the objects to a point where i actually lifted myself up from the lotus position as i was sitting up from the ground i was moving across up and down around i was shocked i couldn't believe it and i was surprised now i didn't want to wake up because i was in, i was in that dream state i did not want to wake up when i woke up i was mad because you know <laughs> I was very, very set and mad because I'm like, wow, I could do it in this realm. <laughs> Why am I here? Why am I here? So I was, I was very upset. And, you know, and, and I saw my guardian angel smiling at me and laughing at me. But that's not fair. But, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the point of that is they do teach you, you know, just, just got to, you know, and you, you travel in your dreams. You travel. Yeah, I know. I know. So they could, you, you could, you could, they could teach you. You'll find someone, your guardian angels, you'll find someone in your travels because you travel in a very lighted place. They will teach you just, just before you go to sleep. Say, I want someone to teach me as I go to sleep. Boom. And wake up and they will teach you in the dream. That's what happened to yeah. me. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I That's know. True. That. 
true. Yeah, it, it is true. 20 plus years, I learned all about the esoteric. See, I'm from Macedonia. I don't have that much money to go to seminars or to buy books from Amazon. How do I know everything? I have I have summoned up more than 10 schools that I graduated all of these 20 years in my dream. I could see the, the buildings. I was a three times viv uh, very vivid graduation. I did seminars. I did case studies, case works. I know that this is how I know I have knowledge of, of every of everything I can I can debate I, I not debate but I can they say my my garden angels and my patients garden angels they say I have direct understanding this past two years I have evolved from direct knowledge to direct understanding um, this is how I don't have so much questions because in my head there is always like mathematician formulas and i do understand everything in the universe so i know i travel but it's it's different i ask different i ask literally when i do healing uh reiki healing my zik and reiki i can i i see with my spiritual eyes the angel of healing juan vera She's always here. I can see her healing. I can actually see her, how she's doing the healing and we heal together. This is what kind of help I'm asking. If there is, a, a, I, I need someone, like you said, martial arts, Reiki, or just yoga, you need someone just, just to push your back, how to stand and how to breathe. I need someone to touch my hand, how to, how to swish the magic wand or how to draw this, this portal. This is why I ask if there is an angel I can summon because I can see them with my spiritual eyes. I need something more imagine? physical. Yeah. I, I do travel like they are not such interesting like yours brother Reggie with levitating I study a lot <laughs> here I do I do exams but we all have our trades absolutely. absolutely well again this even though it's not in person physically uh in our zoom priesthood meetings I strongly encourage you to make sure you're able to attend these meetings because um, there's no guarantee that they'll be recorded or that the past again ever get posted on YouTube. We, we're trying to work on that, um, but it's, we have such a difficult uh, uh, chore here of the internet with our internet. Um, and then Samara has to edit them before she can post them. So, but here in this priesthood cl uh, class meeting, we will have a lot of practical things. One of the things uh, you, you just talked about wands. Well, uh, this is an example of a wand. That, I still have to decorate the outside of the box. Yeah, I know, but everybody has not seen it, Sky. So oh, this, wow. is, this is an example of a wand. That, and then Samara made this. And let me show you. And we'll teach you how to do this so you can do it where you are. You don't have to be here. Um, I still want to put some gold, real gold wire in that groove to go down to magnify the energy. So it starts. In my flute. It starts with. I'm singing my flute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you, gorgeous. You need to fix my flute like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll uh, show you how to. So you can do it. <laughs> so, so, for instance, uh, making a wand begins with a blank. And you get these, we'll give you the source where you can get these blanks. This is a dowel. And then, and that's one blank you can I use. This, I, this is I a, this is a one it. inch, one inch square uh, piece. That's so what I you, you start, you start with that, and and you end up with a wand. Mm -hmm. See, that's that's the same size as the wood portion, and then on the on the back side there's a, a sphere, and on the front side there's a crystal. Oh, it's beautiful. And. Uh, and then actually inside this, and then you got some jewels on the outside. And then inside, this is hollow. And inside this particular uh, wand, Samara has a gold nugget inside that you can't see, but it's inside the hollow section. And then I still want, uh, it, it'll be costly, but um, 
at some point I want to put the gold, um, real gold wire in uh, spir spiraling down. Yeah, this oh, it's going to be gorgeous. And the, and the gold that's on here, this is, uh, the, the spiral is made with 24 karat gold uh, paint, which is a made with 24 karat gold. So anyway, so that just gives you an example. We will have things in the class uh, like that, that will actually show you step by step, you know, how you get how you get the blanks, where you go to get them, what the different types of woods that you would use. And yeah, the, the, it's fun. The, the process begins with choosing your wood. Uh, and then I think we ordered a, a bunch of different kinds that we are attracted to. And then when you feel it, then you know, oh, this, this is the wood that I resonate with. And then you oh. add other things that you resonate with to incorporate it as well. So it's a fun process, creative process. That's the actual so talented. of the wand is actually quick. I'm surprised how um, quick that part, the part that takes is a finishing off of the of it, but of putting the, you know, the glue in. Was quick. Yeah, so yeah, these are like these are all different these. blanks, you know, so these are all blanks for wands and they're all different woods, but they have a, a commonality about them and that's that the grain, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see one that shows a good grain that you might be able to see. This one you might be able to see. Okay, mm. so you can see the grain runs nice and, and laterally along the length of the, of the wand. And that's really important if you're making a wand because you'll see a lot of wood where the grain is very convoluted. And mm. that grain is how the magical energy that you're creating is moves and amplifies. But so if you have a nice linear grain, you can do that. But if you have a convoluted grain, like which is often many types of woods that are very beautiful woods, but they have a very convoluted grain, they don't transmit energy very well because of that convoluted grain. This is a, this one was probably a little harder to see, but you can still see the, the grain pattern is works nice. And, and I don't know if you can see it or not. I probably can't get it clear enough. But anyway, it's the same type of, even though there's slight waves in it, it's a very uh, flowing uh, grain. So anyway, that was kind of off topic for- uh, Well, that's I cool. would add, add to that, that there, you'll see a lot of beautiful wands on the internet, but I've never seen any that incorporate all the things to make a truly powerful wand. There's, they always have things that actually block the energy in the shape or in things that they embed. And so knowing how to create a real Harry Potter magic wand is- Celestine magic wand. Right. Yeah, so that, that's, yeah, those it. are all kind of practical things that we can teach in this priesthood meeting. And uh, even if you're not here, the tools to create something like that are things that you probably either already have or can really easily and inexpensively obtain. So we won't talk more about wands today yeah. Um, but just to let you know that those are, even though there are things that you can do in person when you're, when you're, you know, have someone physically showing you, there's a lot of things that we can do here on Zoom uh, as well. We're very fortunate to have the technology. Or, you know, that was our project 2018 at the summer solstice uh, time. So th those are the type of projects you know, make sure to incorporate and each year we you know it will get better as we add other people's expertise like we'll have our martial arts master <laughs> master here teaching us uh, the and, things that we can incorporate and, and our master herbalist teaching us for healing herbs and things like this so yeah i, I look forward to the next time we can get together on the summer solstice or Vitalta. so Hopefully everybody can make it and COVID stays gone so that we don't have all these stupid regulations that prevent people from traveling. <laughs> yeah, or we'll have to create a Celestine tunnel to get here or something. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be so cool. <laughs> One way or another. <laughs> okay, everybody, see you next week. Have a great week. Peace. Love you so much. Yeah. Oh, Thank love you. you. Love Namaste. you. Bye, Bye, Bye. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.